Hello everyone and welcome to Sunburned Albino Place Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. I'm going to press the A button right now. Okay, so weird stuff has happened with Chapter 10 and Chapter 10 has been lost to history. I will explain all, fret not, for I will reveal all as soon as, uh, you know, I'm actually like playing the level and not reading conversations. So yeah, you get to wait patiently for that. Chapter 12, A Strange Land, let's do this. This chapter is kind of difficult. Ike? What's bothering you? You've been moping around ever since we came aboard. I'm just a little seasick. Seasick? You're such a bad liar. You never even get regular sick. You're not the type to get seasick. Really, it's nothing. Come on, talk to me. You've been doing so much lately. I just want the chance to help you for a change. Well, all right. I'll tell you what's been bothering me. It's that incident back in Toha. Go on. When everyone discovered Ranulf was a Lagos, all those people, they changed, just like that. Up until that instant, they'd seemed like such kind and decent people. I just... I had no idea Bjork prejudice against the Lagos was so strong. Why do they hate them so much? How are we so different, Ranulf and I? I have to say, at first, I was scared too, when I saw how they could change. They can do things that we, I mean, we Bjork can't do. They're not like us. Mist, you can't honestly feel. It's different now. Everyone's so very nice. But you know, that's because of all the time we've spent together. I've seen how they are. I've gotten to know them. That's why I've changed. I'm not scared or nervous around them, but other people don't get that chance. I think that's why they're frightened. Maybe you're right. Maybe people like me are the odd ones, the people who accept others as they are. I wish more people were like that. I mean, no one really wants to fight, do they? Doesn't everyone want peace? I guess it's just hard to put all those fears behind us. You're right, it is very hard. Oh, okay, that's Nazir, yeah. Nazir, what's the big idea, eavesdropping on us like that? How do you find sailing? Have you gotten sick at all? We're fine, but answer a question for me, would you? Why are you here? Why do you associate with the Lagos? Why? Besides the obvious financial benefits, I suppose I do so because I am one. What? No, you're not a Lagos. I don't see any tail or anything. Because I've chosen to live among Bjork, I've taken certain steps to make sure I'm not recognized. I've had to change my attire, my feeding habits. I've done many things. Why would you do that? Lagos cannot survive in isolation, nor can Bjork. If both races are to thrive, they must learn to coexist. I have spent many years searching for a way to make this happen. You think that Lagos and Bjork can live together? After everything you must have seen? I'm impressed. Ike, you will never truly understand a matter unless you look at it from each party's perspective. As you say, the Lagos are indeed now persecuted by the Bjork, but long ago these roles were reversed. Whatever happened in the past does not justify what we do to the Lagos now. That is the thinking of an honest man. Keep things simple and pure. I like that. Still, the strength of your conviction comes from your youth and your innocence. Trust me, it will be tested. When your journey is over, how will you be changed? I pray your conviction is not lost to despair. Talking to you is hard work. Someday you'll understand. For now, my role is simply to deliver you safely to Begneon. Ranulf has paid me quite handsomely with money from the King of Gallia himself, and I will not let him down. We're out of our element here at sea, so you're all we have to depend on. Thank you for your help. I will do what I am able. Ike, here's a summary of our last battle. Earn 0, spent 360, current 26, 320, combat 1383, bonus 480. MVP Boyd, I guess that's fine. Uh, new Alley Zhark. All right. I mean, I didn't really see anybody as an MVP. There were no casualties, and no one suffered permanent injury. We fought excellently. That's all I have to report, if you'll excuse me. Okay, so what happened in Chapter 10 is uh, I recorded the episode. The episode was all fine. It, everything worked out just the way that, you know, it was all fine. It was a great video. The video was just fine. And the thing that happened was, when I tried to upload it to YouTube, it got to 66% completion, and then it stayed there for the next about seven and a half hours. So much to where I had to upload episode 11 to try and see if that would, like, jolt it out of its stasis, because that's logical. 
Uh, but yeah, it did not work. So episode 10 has been gone forever. Uh, but okay, let me read this info first, because we get a new character. Ah, Ike! Grab that boy! What's going on? Mm. No more running for you. Nazir, who is this? A stowaway. I gather he boarded the ship at Toha. What are you doing here? Why did you sneak aboard the ship? You won't talk? In that case... Hmm? O ow! Ouch! Ike, there's no need to be so rough. I'm not going to waste my time playing games with this urchin. You want me to let you go? Open your mouth and start talking. Ow, ow, ow! Quit it! I'll talk! That hurt! I thought you were gonna break my face! Well, what's your name? And what are you doing here? I'm... so... I I I'm a thief, but I didn't come on board the ship to steal anything. Stop scowling at me like that! You're making me uncomfortable! It's not just you. Ike always looks like that. Don't mind him, just keep talking. I'm looking for someone. I heard this ship was sailing for Begneon, so I decided to climb aboard. This person you're after is in Begneon? I don't know. The trail went cold in Toha, and I couldn't think of anywhere else to go from there. Is it family? Huh? The person you're looking for? Yeah. I mean, we're not related by blood or anything, but we're definitely family. All right. Nazir, my mercenary company will look after this boy. He won't be a burden to you or your crew. If that's what you want to do, that's fine with me. Are you sure? You're going to be put to work. I hope you're prepared. Sure, no problem. I'll I'll do whatever you need. Okay, yeah, Soth is a thief, but he sucks, so there's no real reason to have him. Like, his stats are terrible. He's only good for a, a chest, you know, opening chest. But, uh, yeah, where was it? What was I talking about? Yeah, it stalled at 66%, and it was there for like seven and a half hours. And I was try yeah, I tried to upload the other video to the C episode 11 to see if maybe that would jolt it out of its stasis, but it did not. And so I was forced to delete it, and it's gone forever. Episode 10 will never, ever see the light of day, it appears. Uh, but that was Prisoner Release, that was chapter 10. Uh, and that's when I unlocked Nephany and Braum and where the fuck is Kiran? Kiran. I'm only using Nephany because she's the only good unit. As you can see, I got her to level 14 and her stats are pretty good. I mean, you saw that much because I used her in chapter 11, but, uh... Yeah, see, look at Soth's stats. Strength 5, skill 7, speed 11. I mean, it, true, given, granted, he's only level 1. Uh, but also a problem is that he has Blossom. Grants unit fewer experience points, but enhances growth over time. I don't know what that means, if that increases the percentage chance that his stats will level up, but... I would much rather... I mean, I can just delete Blossom, right? But, I mean, again, there's really no point in leveling him up. You don't need more than one thief. And he's basically just a fragile bit of glass at this point. Okay, uh, but... In uh, preparation for the chapter that we are about to experience, you don't need you don't need iron anymore because you have a steel axe. The short axe is like a better hand axe, but I don't think he needs that either. Yeah, wind. Let's give you L wind. Forget fire, because again, you're not going to ever be using fire. Yeah, because uh, we're going to be fighting a bunch of ravens. And uh, wind magic is good against ravens, and so are bows, which is why our, uh, Rolf is going to be good. I feel like Marsha is going to be a liability. Nephany should be able to handle herself all right, but... Okay. Uh... Let's award experience. Who needs a little boost? I think we could stand to level up Rolf a little bit. Because again, I do want that strength to go to go up. Super effective damage isn't uh, very good if you're not actually doing regular damage to begin with. That's it. That's it, Rolf. And also, I think it would really help if you got your speed to 12 so they wouldn't attack you twice. If they hit you. Oh, baby, Rolf. Making me proud. All right, that's good enough for you. Hmm. Let's give the rest to Marsha. 
Oh, I did that completely wrong. Defense 9, I guess that helps, but like... Uh, XP 99, please. That's it. And then a little bonus experience for you. Strength, skill, and speed. Show me what you got. Oh, I like that. I do. You're pretty good all around. That's great. And you can fly, so you're going to help out a lot. Uh, since we're confined to the ship here. Oh yeah, and uh, Zhark has Adept as well, same as Soren, so that's good for him. And uh, Ilyana has Shade. Mist has Miracle. Uh, Wrath increases critical hit percentage whenever the unit's HP is at half or less, and that's really helpful. I would get rid of Gamble if I gave a crap about ever using you in a fight. Okay, remove Blossom because I don't want that. And all we have is Miracle Encounter, so that's kind of sucky. Uh, but I'd say everything is all good to go here, so let's go. Let's do this. Nazir, what is it? Nothing. Nothing we can do about it, anything about it, at any rate. We're being followed by pirates. Really? I don't see any ships. Not by sea, by air. Look up. Are those birds? If they are, they must be huge. Those are laggers, Ike. Ravens from Kilvas. Their black wings are an ill omen for all who see them. Titania, Soren, you notice them coming as well? Yes, Soren and I saw them when we were discussing our plans from the aft decks. I've heard stories, but they're really flying. Wow. We're still out of their range, but airborne foes can be especially troublesome. I'd prefer to avoid them altogether. Let's see if we can outrun them. Really? You think your fucking huge-ass ship can outrun a bird? I fucking doubt it. From what I've been told, the flying corsairs of Kilvis and Phoenicis are far more cruel than any beast laggers. Winged pirates? How am I supposed to fight against that? What was that? Ugh, felt like we hit something. Blast, we've run aground. We must be caught on a reef or something. Move it, lads. Get the ship free. Ike, the crows are coming. Pull everyone together. Looks like we're in for a fight. Because you had such a good chance of outrunning them before you ran into a reef. Oh no, they're catching up. Predictable humans sailed right into our trap without fail. Let's finish this quickly. It won't be long before Phoenicis or Goldoa takes an interest in what's happening here. Soren, do you have a plan? I've done research in the past. All members of the bird tribes are vulnerable to wind magic. I think it's safe to assume that they are also as susceptible to, susceptible to arrows as any other flyer. Wind magic and bows. Alright, everyone gather your weapons and prepare to meet the enemy on the deck. I want a small group to remain below decks to protect Princess Alentia and the crew. We've never faced an enemy like this. I want everyone to stay together. Let's go! All right, who do, we, who do we want? Not Mordecai. Not Riss. Not Mist. We don't want our healers in this. Uh, the reason for that is because they will freaking die, and there's no way to protect them. Unless you box them in around four other units, which is a pain in the ass, and I don't want to have to do that. Uh, but we'll, we'll have Ma Oscar, Marsha, and Nephany. Oh, that's all we can select? It's kind of a shame, because I kind of wanted Volk in there, too, just because... But, uh, I think we'll need Titania. Yeah, I think Volk is just a liability. Alright. Yeah, make sure our weaker units are in the middle of the stronger ones. And I think that should be just fine. Yeah, 
No, the issue is this guy. And also this guy. So as long as Boyd stays there, stays here, Rolf can't be attacked if I move Oscar here. That's it. Alright. And since these three are blocking... I feel like I can javelin this guy and then move back. I mean, it's worth a shot, isn't it? Nice hit. Nice hit. Alright. And yeah, I can move back and protect whoever I choose to move in here, which is probably going to be Ilyana. And then I think we're all fine after that, and we'll just see, we'll just let uh, the events carry themselves out. Yeah, it makes sense. Marsha's got enough uh, defense to ward off a couple raven attacks, so she'll be useful from the air. Might as well. Nice hit. I feel like Rolf should be able to take care of that. Oh, almost. That's kind of bullshit. God damn it. I would hate to rely on a 20% uh, critical hit chance. What about you? Yeah, you do all right. Nice hit. You're gonna whittle the guys down, so, uh... We're gonna move you back just so no one else can get you. Because you're starting to lose some health there. Right, Thunder... L Thunder will take you out, so let's do it. Oh, goody. Good job, Ilyana. Alright. That's good teamwork. You know, we're all gonna have to work together to do... To kill these guys, since they're only gonna be on deck for one turn, basically. Alright, magic and resistance, good. And Lagos Stone, which, uh, you can you put on Lagos to, uh, get- oh, shit. Alright, this is the only one that can attack Ileana. Uh, but we're going to have Titania intercept here. That's it. And then these guys are all still fine. I hate to do this, but I feel like I have to kill the thing. Or what I could do. Oh shit, no I can't, because Rolf is there. God damn it. Okay, we'll have Rolf attack this guy. Hopefully he dies. He didn't. But we have Rolf attack him, and then we have Boyd shove him out of the way so Soren can kill the Raven. Yeah, good defense. These guys' speed is like, yeah, 16. He might still attack Rolf twice, if I were to let him live. Luckily, I don't plan on doing that, but Rolf's got the defense to withstand a blow from them. Or two. Goodbye. Yeah, uh, Soren's defense is still real low, but he is a mage, so... I mean, even Ilyana's defense is higher than his, so that's kind of strange to think about, but... Alright, uh, we're gonna have three guys at once to attack here. We better make sure that we can take them out. This guy's gonna be injured from Titania. Okay, I can't hit that guy. Uh, we can hit this guy, though. Ouch. It does not appear that I equipped the Lagos Slayer, which is kind of a... kind of a bummer, but, uh... Oh, well. Oh, and here's Jill. Caught up! 
At last. I'll do this on my own. I will not let them escape. Huh? What are those things? Giant birds? Disgusting. Could they be? Are they bird half-breeds? But yeah, she'll uh, join our team on this as soon as she talks to Ike. Yeah, see, if I lag a slay... Actually, that's not even gonna kill you. That's kind of interesting. All right. Well, if you take one more hit of damage, you're going to be extremely vulnerable to death. What if... Okay, you can L Thunder and get the kill here. I say take it. Oh, nice critical hit, too. Nice, not bad. And we get a coin, which is worth one gold, which is some bullshit, but, uh, yeah. Hmm. I'll do it. Get a little extra damage in. I mean, Nephany's defense is nothing to be joking about. It's 12, that's pretty damn high. And then from there, 79% chance to kill this guy, but if I get hit, that is gonna be trouble. But Titania could rescue him if that were to happen. So I would say that we go for it. Nice hit. Ah, uh, good job. Oh, that's a ton of experience, too. All right. Yeah, we're still protecting Ilyana, so these... You guys can't move. You're the only one left that that is in our immediate range. More will spawn. Now let's have you go down there. You go there. Do you have a vulnerary? Of course you don't. I mean, maybe I should have given them some, but, uh, yeah. Let's equip your Iron Lance. And then move into the line of fire here. And help block z -Hark. But if you're gonna, if he's gonna attack z -Hark, he's gonna attack z -Hark. But, uh, you know, we can at least give him a, a few more options. Oh, well, okay, now he's not going to attack z -Hart. And that's it. There's another one. Oh, he's going to attack z -Hark. God damn it. The one opening that I left open. Nice speed. Very good. All right, great. Uh, sad. Alright, you should be able to reach Ike on the next turn. You do have a Vulnerary, so we will be using it. Can you- yep, you can take the kill, so you should. Seraph Robe, nice. Okay. Uh, nobody can reach z -Hark. Or anybody here, for that matter, so we'll Vulnerary. And we'll position everybody uh, here. Make sure that everybody is in range, because the boss will start to move up after a couple turns. And uh, we will have to kill him. Alright, you block Z-Hark from there. I'd say that that is... Okay, you can attack, or you can uh, talk to Ike from here. You, why are you lollygollygagging about? Who were? I am Jill Fitzart, wyvern rider of Dayan, attached to Commander Har's battalion. I offer a truce. I cannot sit by and allow a human vessel to be attacked by subhuman degenerates. I will fight with you. We will accept no help from Dayan. This is no place for foolish pride. At this rate, the subhumans will devour you. I will not accept aid from anyone who thinks Lagos are subhuman. What are you babbling about? I'm on your side! We'll talk after I chase off these crows. Bleed the half-breed! Hold it, what? What in the world is going on? 
Yeah, Jill is basically a worse version of Marsha, I would say. And uh, I don't typically like to use her. But shit happens, and maybe I will. But no, because I really do think there's only room for one flyer. I don't know why he moves so goddamn slow, that, uh, that boss crow over there. Carrying some baggage, some heavy weight. Alright, that one will be able to attack next turn as well. So let's kill this one. Wow, nice. I was gonna move Oscar and have Rolf take him out, but good job, Ilyana. You know, when you want your experience, you get it. So, uh, and you're almost about to change class, too. So that is good for you. Weapon level up, good. Oh, secret book, that goes to fucking boy, doesn't it? Yeah, I do believe it does, although there may be people who could use it better. <sighs> All right, you can attack either Boyd, Marsha, or Nephany. In which case, I would put Oscar here to protect Marsha. I think Nephany is fine and can handle herself. And that's going to be the end of my turn. Yeah, I figured as much. Nice miss. Bye. <laughs> All right, Rolf will take him out. That is a given. All right, but this is where the trouble is where trouble is gonna happen. All right, goodbye you. And I'm so glad that archers have such high hit percentages. Nice weapon level up too. All right, now you can wield iron bows. I believe. Uh, no. Steel and iron are both weapon level E in this game. That's that's a change, and that's new, so... Uh, Alright, you cannot attack Rolf. So good, I don't have to protect you with anybody. But you can attack Zhark now that I've moved Oscar. Which means... If I move Ike, Ilyana is vulnerable from behind from this guy. So I would then have to move Jill. Her defense is high enough that she can stave off an attack from this guy. So I will do it. You go there. And then... Well, fuck, then Z-Arc's gonna be vulnerable from behind, isn't he? Or can anyone reach that far? Let's do this. Okay, then you're... Okay, then you're out of, uh... Out of range, then. Alright, and everybody here is gonna be fine. Yeah, because you have a demi-band, which means you can maintain Raven form forever, but you lose stats. So your strength is 14, your skill is 14, and your speed is 15. I, uh... I would say Nephany is going to be fine. She can be attacked from both these guys, which... But I think she's still all right. Let's end it, and we'll see what happens. And there's another one. Uh, yeah, feel free to attack Titania and get yourself half-killed. Then you... I don't know why people like to attack Boyd, but you're gonna die. Plunder away! King Nezala has given us his blessings! I don't know what, Boyd, what that was either. Oh, shit. And that actually sucks. Also, I don't know what you did to me there. 
if you maybe lowered my weapon durability. If that, I, I think that's what that might have been. But god damn it. Inopportune critical hits. Rolf was supposed to take that and gain like a ton of experience. Sad days. Uh, Rolf can't reach this guy, I don't think. Nope. Uh, well, Il uh, well, actually, why don't we have Marsha at least do a little damage? Go for a javelin shot. Worth a, ch worth a shot. Why not, right? Then let's... Whoops. Then let's have Nephany go for a javelin shot. All right, that's some extra experience for you. Good, and it got you a level up, so that's why we do these things. That's kind of shitty. But you're still a good unit. Then I would say maybe Z-Heart takes this one, actually. Bye-bye. And then I would also say that maybe I've made a grievous error, because now Z-Hark is in the line of fire from this, ro the, from this raven. I treated this turn like it was the last turn. And that kind of sucks. Well, let's go here. Alright, you'll block him from that side. You'll block him from this side. That's better. Okay. What are you going for? Of course you are, because you want to die for some reason. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's almost a one-hit kill. Okay, who wants this? Oh, I should have moved Rolf, so we'd be in position to kill this one. God damn me. All right. Marsha, this one's yours, if you can make it happen. Although you probably can't. Let's move Boyd out of the way. And then you can attack with your Slim Lance, which is the most likely to hit. Go for it. Nice. And that's going to be a level for you, isn't it? Yes, it is. I like it. I do. Arm scroll, that's very good. And that's everything. Yeah, that's a short chapter, isn't it? Is everyone all right? I'll check on injuries. Those crows make fierce opponents. Nazir, how's the ship? Completely immobilized. We can't shake free of this reef. I feel useless just waiting around here. There has to be something I can do to help. Hey, Ike! Where are you going? Should you be leaving the ship? Nothing's getting done sitting around here. I just want to go ashore and see what I can see. What? Hold on, Ike. You can't. That's... Ah! Ike! Behind you! You there! What are you doing? Huh? This could be trouble. This is Gul'doan territory. Outsiders are not permitted. No, wait, you don't understand. Our ship has run aground. There's nothing we can do. We're stuck here. Then return to your ship. What happens to Bjork is none of our affair. That's ridiculous. You're a complete... You have been warned. You will not be warned a second time. Hey! Cease this at once. What do you think you're doing? My... My Lord Prince. Man of the Bjork. My countrymen were discourteous. I ask that you forgive them. Who are you? I am Kurthnaga, Prince of Goldoa. The prince. Now we're getting somewhere. Thanks to some Kilvis pirates, our ships run aground. Can you lend us any help? What is it? You can't help us, can you? I am not used to being addressed in such a direct manner. I was taken off guard. My apologies. No, I didn't. If anyone should apologize here, it's me. My father had a great deal to say about my lack of etiquette. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. Please pay it no mind. I am more concerned with the misfortune your journey has met. Of late, the ravens have grown ever more barbarous, and this cannot stand. My father will lodge a formal protest with Kilvis, I assure you. In the meantime, we shall help you with your ship. Gareth, direct the others to push their ship free. At once!
dragons! They're all dragons! They're huge! And so strong, it's incredible! It's overwhelming. Yeah, it is. Goldoa is the land of the dragons. More than any other Lagos tribe, they are known for their longevity. I've heard tales of Goldoans still living who flew the skies when the goddess herself still walked the land. How is it you know so much about Goldoa? Everything I've learned comes from books. Goldoa itself no longer has any contact with the outside world. Seeing them now, it's like a dream. So this is good fortune, is that what you're saying? She's saying we got lucky. For once, your recklessness actually got us out of trouble. What's that supposed to mean? We have moved your ship safely when without harm to you or your vessel. My subjects tell me your ship was indeed lodged against a reef. However, there was no structural damage to your ship. You need not interrupt your journey. That's good news. Thank you. Is there anything else you require? If you need food or fresh water, we can replenish your supplies. That would be most appreciated. We are beginning to run low on water. As for food, any fruit, meat, fish, anything fresh would be wonderful. It shall be done. Gareth, will you see to it? Yes, at once. I know that Goldoa does not engage in trade with other nations, but will you accept gold in payment? Do not worry about payment, but you've done so much for us when you could have left us to die out there. We must repay you somehow. Sweet courtesy as ever the herald of hospitality. Would this suffice to explain my actions? Hospitality? Isn't that for guests? As you know, Goldoa prefers isolation. We rarely see foreigners, especially Bjork, and even more rarely do we treat with them. Chance has brought us together, and I am grateful for this opportunity. In fact, I wish we could feast a while and converse. However, my father would never allow it. You can't expect us to accept so generous a gift, but I do. I insist that you consider it a personal gift from Goldoa's prince. However, I have made you uncomfortable, so if you feel you must decline... No, of course not. We will be happy to accept your gift. We appreciate it. I'm so pleased you understand. Ike, Captain Nazar wants to depart as soon as possible. Understood. Well then, I beg your leave. Prince Kurthnaga, I won't forget your kindness. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Take care. Farewell, Bjork. May your journey be safe. My lord Ike, is something amiss? First those ravens attack us, and then a band of Goldoan dragons rescues us. I can't understand how they are all considered Lagos. Is that strange? No, I see what you're saying. Just as there are both good and evil Bjork, there must be good and evil Lagos as well. But they are so distinct in appearance, it is tempting to assume each race is, as a whole, intrinsically good or evil. Aye, that it is. The beast tribes of Gallia and the dragons of Goldoa seem so honorable, and the birds of Kilvis and Phoenicis seem so cruel. It seems so easy to reduce them all to good or evil. I'm sure it can't be as simple as that. Look at us, Bjork. Dayans are evil and Cremaeans are not. It's as simple as that. Well, wait. There were those prejudiced fools we met in port. They weren't all that honorable. Maybe you're right. Much of what seems good and evil is simply a matter of perspective, Ike. Many conditions affect our judgment. Drawing a definitive line is nigh impossible. Nazir, where have you been? You vanished without a trace. I am uncomfortable around dragons. I thought it would be better if I stayed below in my cabin. My apologies. Now that you mention it, Soren seems to have disappeared as well. Have you seen him? Perhaps he's feeling nauseated. For one unaccustomed to sea travel, it's not uncommon. Right. I think I'll check up on him later. The wind is picking up. I believe I will go and check on the condition of our sails. Keep yourselves warm up here. It's a chill wind that blows in these waters. Princess Alincia, you should be returning to your cabin. What about you, my lord Ike? I'll stay on deck a while longer. I have a lot to think about. Would you mind if I stayed here with you? I won't be any bother. Hmm? It's all right with me. Oh, thank you. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.